Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Very exciting news today. I just got in the mail uh, yesterday or the day before the Afterburner diesel heater controller. The Afterburner is a controller that you can basically plug right into your diesel heater. It is good for the triangle connection and the screw-in connection, but there's a guy in Australia called Ray Jones and he has come up with a fantastic design for a new diesel heater controller. Some of the features that I'm very interested in is the Wi-Fi capability so you can control it remotely and also it shuts down the diesel heater if it gets too hot, which is great because some of those nights where you're a little cold but you don't want to wake up sweating in the middle of the night because your heater won't kick off are brutal. And very excited that this controller can do that. This controller has a lot of other great features that I'll get into later. Uh, I'm basically going to install it right now. I've got all my parts laying all over the van. Me and Kayla are taking off this weekend for a couple month road trip. So this controller came in clutch timing. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed. I've gone through two diesel heater controllers since I've had my heater, so that's about two years. So I'm going through like a controller a year, which just doesn't seem to, shouldn't be happening. I get an error code, I think it's E06 or E07 or something like that. And twice now it's been my controller. So very strange, comment below if you've had similar issues, but I'm very excited to upgrade to this controller. Uh, I'll go through some of the things you need to check for uh, before you order this and there are also some options that you can check or uncheck it, depending on what features you want in this controller. Uh, this controller also adjusts for elevation and pressure which is very nice. He hasn't come out with the update for it yet but I'm sure it'll happen soon and that'll be great for going from sea level up into the mountains. So. Yeah, let's get into it. This is my spare box. So I carry all of this all the time in the van, just in case, especially in the winter time. Um, I have like two pumps, computer unit, wiring. I just have everything here just in case I need to do a fix while we're on the road. Uh, so I got these parts out and diesel heater is right there. So, I'll show you how I've accessed that and set that up and then I have the afterburner right here So you can actually pick what color configuration you want, which is kind of cool I went with black and gray um, Because mine is mounted up here, and I feel like it'll blend in and look pretty good. So yeah That is the controller I also got a programmed remote Right there looks like that this is the temperature sensor, which is great because I'm going to wire mine probably along inside my van instead of having it in the front portion. This will be a lot more accurate for me. This is the wiring harness. Uh, so you connect that to the factory wiring harness that comes with the Chinese diesel heater. And then you actually can transfer all of your settings. So I'll show you how to do that. And then this is an extra wiring harness don't require this but i got this feature anyways uh it's so you can program your heater depending on what inputs and outputs you program so i'm not exactly sure how that works i'm probably not going to set that up yet but it's something that i may do in the future for sure and then he's got install guides and user manuals and things like that so yeah, lots of information here. I also always carry an extra controller. Uh, this is the controller that I've been having a lot of trouble with. So yeah, gonna go ahead and switch this sucker out. Before you purchase an afterburner controller, you need to check a few things with your diesel heater to see if it's compatible. If it's not, no worries. You can always change out the uh, computer that's located inside your diesel heater. I will show you both. So this is one that is compatible with the afterburner and I ordered a Vivor one for spare parts and the uh, module on that is not compatible. So I'm gonna be switching that one out for this one. This is my old original one that I had to my controller, long story, but the point is I have both, so I'll show you both. There's a lot of information on his website on which controllers are compatible and which um, CPUs are compatible. 
Uh, I'd recommend checking your CPU just to be sure because the controllers can kind of um, vary and it can be a little harder to tell. There's no mistaking which ones are compatible. I will link also all of these products in the description below if you want spare parts, if you want to check out the afterburner, all the links will be down there. Let's begin. I probably don't actually have to uh, remove the seat to do this, but I want to give you guys a better view. Got my diesel heater right here. Step number one is going to be removing the fuse, which is conveniently right here. So this just is removing power to the diesel heater. I actually have a fuse here and a fuse back on my DC fuse panel, but I'll just remove this guy. And then I am going to remove this cover to access the uh, CPU computer uh, module for the diesel heater. And then I have kind of disassembled this. So I got my heater right here. I had to take this plastic cover off to access this guy. This is where the new afterburner is going to plug into. So yeah, let's uh, take this apart and take this apart and I'll show you how. So all I do here is unthread. This guy just comes off like that. And this is only held on by one screw and then there's kind of a uh, clip right in here. Prime example of a uh, module that isn't compatible with the aftermarket burner. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna know which plugins go where and then I'm going to install this guy. So this was the original one that came with this diesel heater and I swapped them out. They worked fine. I had to do it because I uh, had to use a different controller. Um, so I'm going to reinstall this one because this one is compatible. New module is installed. Always a good idea to check to make sure your fan is uh, spinning freely uh, and if it needs to be adjusted while you're in here. All right guys, so here's the thing. These are not compatible, these are compatible. So it's kind of tough with the controller, but you can tell the big giveaways are the text, the arrow size, and one other thing I noticed is the gear. On the top left, like the settings button there, it looks completely different on this one than it does on this guy right here. So hopefully you can see that and tell the difference, but controllers aren't, very reliable. I would definitely look at the modules, the computer modules. Uh, this one is not compatible. This one is compatible. So these two go together. This is from the Vivor one, and this is from, uh, I can't remember the brand that I originally bought, but these work with that brand. I'm gonna install this one on this heater so I have a full spare unit. I can basically just, when this one dies or if anything happens, I can just bring this one out, put this new one in, be good to go. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the altitude compensation. So awesome feature with this new controller. Very excited to uh, be able to use that in the near future. Another thing to mention is unfortunately, even though this is Bluetooth, I have an iPhone, so I can't use this for Bluetooth, but I'm hoping I can still use it uh, for Wi-Fi. Not that I'm honestly gonna be controlling it remotely that often, but if I want to, it's nice to know that I can. Hopefully one day there's an app that'll link to this for iPhone users, but maybe not. Either way, it's all right. I just uh, loosened up all four of those screws. You can see 
few different uh, plug-in locations. One for the heater, and then one for the temperature sensor, and then one for the other module there. Then it looks like there's also a battery, which is really nice, a backup battery. Hold all the settings just in case it loses power. Good feature. Make sure to run your wires through the back cover before putting this back together. So I'm gonna put those four screws back in and then we're gonna plug it in and see how it transfers data from my old controller to the new afterburner. All right, so I got my setup hanging here. <laughs> Might not be great for the wiring harnesses, but uh, they're they're pretty uh, hardy, so it should be fine. Uh, I haven't applied power. Uh, I'm gonna apply power, and then I'm gonna follow this step-by-step -step procedure. It sounds like it's fairly easy if you have a uh, digital controller, but if you have the uh, rotary knob, it uh, can be a little bit more complex. Uh, you wanna make sure to follow these procedures exactly how he says because if you don't it can erase the original settings for your heater and you could have problems so make sure to follow these exactly as he states so i'm going to go ahead and do that transfer the settings from the old guy to the new one and touch base after all right guys so that was super straightforward uh very easy to tune the parameters from your existing controller to this one. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. Honestly, it's very straightforward. It'll take you uh, a few seconds just to read through and tune it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power and then disconnect my old controller and install this one and put a few, two screws it looks like in and um, run this temperature sensor and then fire it up and test it out. I actually unscrewed uh, the top piece to do this properly. Definitely recommend so I can just uh, Go like so after I attach it and then plug these guys back in and we'll be good to go. Very easy. Just like that. I also have my temperature sensors just up on the other side here. I think that's a decent place for it to uh, pick up the temperature. Should be, just got it right here. So it's a decent place for it. It's a lot better than here because when we pull our curtain across, the temperature difference from inside the cab versus like inside the back is a lot different. All right, everything is connected back up. Got it installed there. And I just hit start. So holding down the center button turns it on. It says heating glow plug right now. This is the temperature outside. Shows battery, shows a ton of information. Um, and yeah, let's see how this goes. Just finished testing it out work flawlessly. I'm gonna have to go ahead and spend the next two months playing around with all these settings, seeing what this controller is really capable of. I'm really excited to test it out further, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Let me know if you've been having the same problems with your controller. If you've gone through a couple, I don't know what's going on with mine, but check the wiring and everything seems to be fine. So I think it's just, you know, one of the poor Chinese diesel heater qualities, unfortunately, but I would definitely recommend carrying a spare box of stuff like I do here, just in case your heater goes in the middle of winter. Do not want that to happen. Big shout out to Ray Jones for coming up with this. I'm sure it took a lot of work, but we're all very appreciative. If you guys want to check out any of these parts or links, check out in the description below. This video is completely unsponsored. Ray did not contact me at all or anything. I wanted to do this on my own and I'm really happy that I did. So if you like this video, if you found it useful, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.